This is a little bit different format this morning. There, there is to be preaching. I want to introduce to you what's going on this summer. Scott Demarest will be teaching us through the book of Zechariah on Sunday mornings over the summer. Uh, that is an underrated book in our Bible, often overlooked and thrilling. And Scott, I don't want to steal your thunder, um, but we're really looking forward to this. And uh, I'm not sure how much time Scott will have this morning to introduce the book of Zechariah. It kind of depends uh, how much time we spend together in this first portion of our time. But what we're doing this morning is honoring our two seminary graduates. Kyle Frazee and Steve Kovac graduate from the Expositor's Seminary next week. There's a danger in us recognizing them here this morning. Not all papers have been turned in. I don't know, have your papers been turned in? You're done? You preached your last sermons, everything's good. But the grades have not been recorded, right? So there's a risk. You know, we honor their graduation this morning. They, they better make it next week, <laughs> or we'll have to eat our words. Next Sunday is graduation on the campus of Grace Emanuel Bible Church in Jupiter, Florida, and they, along with, I believe, seven others, are there nine total graduates this year? Thirteen. So uh, along with 11 others, we'll be gathering there together with all of the faculty, which are the pastors from the campus churches, and we will join together and celebrate the grace of God and the hard work of these men who have been equipped. Uh, I want you to turn in your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 2. And, and sometimes, I think in, in our modern era, we've become accustomed to men being equipped academically in academic institutions. And there's no doubt that pastoral ministry requires an academic rigor. But something's lost when the church hasn't been training future leaders for the church. It would be like training a doctor and letting him have only books and never patients. Never doing rounds, never being in a hospital, never caring for people and then sending them out <laughs> to inflict harm. And the reality is, the ministry of the local church is the best environment to train men for ministry in the local church. But in order for churches to do that well, they have to have the academic rigor that it requires. And so, uh, what Steve and Kyle have been enduring for the last six years is that academic rigor. Uh, nearly 100 credit hours of a master's degree program uh, where they've studied the Bible in the original languages, uh, where they've learned church history and systematic theology and pastoral ministry, all the while cultivating the continued disciplines of forging character, shaping at the heart level the kind of man required for leadership and service in the church. Uh, this is difficult stuff and they've been laboring hard at it. And it's difficult because of what the task is ahead of them. 2 Timothy 2.2 2 has Paul instructing Timothy these words, the things you've heard from me in the presence of many witnesses. In other words, New Testament apostolic truth, these things. And trust them to faithful men to faithful men, men who have proven genuine faithful character, fidelity to the truth, fidelity to their Lord at the heart level, and trust the truths of the Bible to these men with a purpose, so that they may instruct others who will be able to teach others yet. Four generations are marked out in this verse for the conveyance of biblical truth for the propagation of the gospel through the vehicle of the church in everything God has designed the church to be from one hand to another in something of a relay race. The apostolic doctrine in the New Testament is a precious baton that must not be dropped if this great commission race is to be run. Jesus said it wouldn't fail and he uses the means of the local church training subsequent generations of leaders for the church. Grace Bible Church has had the rich privilege of doing that very thing. 
And this is something of a milestone for us today. Kyle and Steve are the first two graduates from Grace Bible Church to complete the entirety of the Expositor's Seminary training. And you're thinking, wait, what about Omri? Well, Omri did more. Omri got a master's degree in biblical counseling from the master's university, and then he did GBI, our in-house four-year seminary training here, and then he did an extra year at TES. But these two, Kyle and Steve, the last six years, become the first beginning-to-end expositor seminary graduates from Grace Bible Church. This is a milestone for us. This is important, and it, and it marks a period of this church's life which is significant. You think in the Old Testament, they walked across the Jordan, they piled up stones, Ebenezer stones. What, what were these for? They were monuments of testimony to God's grace. You got us through. And so Kyle and Steve, you have labored, you have worked hard only to reach the starting gate. <laughs> this isn't a finish line. We have a lot to look forward to. There has been the classroom, which is a trial. But then there's been the classroom of trials that has been a part of their training. Both of these men have endured difficulties and have suffered. It's not just book work, it is life work. There has been the classroom of character forging, the classroom of their own hearts and their homes, and there has been the classroom of this church. Not just the classroom in the northeast corner of this building. All of those classrooms have combined together in the hand of God to shape these men. And you've had such a significant part of that. There is a sweet symbiosis or a working together for mutual benefit between the training of pastors and the local church. See, Kyle and Steve have used their gifts in this church for our benefit. And you, church, have employed your gifts for their benefit. They have learned what the church is to be. You have taught and cared for them even as they have taught and cared for us. Listen, it is a stretch for a small local church to train pastors. It takes time and effort and patient endurance on the part of faculty, other churches involved, the elders of this church. And it takes the patient endurance of this church as a body as they exercise their gifts and grow in grace and try out their training. And this is a good exercise for us as a church. It's good for us in the immediate. We get sharpened. We get our rough edges as a church sort of whittled down. But in the long run, this is not just convenient or beneficial for the church. This is actually crucial for the church. If the church does not multiply itself and multiply itself at the leadership level, identify and hone and train and equip and send qualified leaders, if the church doesn't do that, who will? Who can? Who is equipped to do that besides God's institution of which Jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail against it? No other institution carries that promise. And so the training of men in the church is about the survival of the church and the progress of the gospel. It's critical that we do this. So we have benefited so much. Kyle and Ashley from your ministries in this church, Steve and Drew from your ministries in this church, from your love, your teaching, service, hospitality, you have grown in your ministries and this church has grown as a result. And you have grown in our affections. We're gonna let Kyle come say some things. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Smed, for and the elders for giving me an opportunity just to express gratitude. I uh, would just get to, to share a few words about uh, not just the seminary experience, but really just the experience here at Grace Bible Church. Uh, I think about just the, the program, just all of the things that, that I'm thankful for. I mean, it's just the uh, TES is a, a, wonderful, a wonderful training program. And like Smed said, because it is in the local church, you have all the, the academics, Uh, all the coursework, all the language work, all the theology, but not just in a classroom, but in the context of body life, uh, in the context of of putting those things to work uh, in a small group, in a student ministries, uh, in in discipleship relationships, and just getting to see God work 
through his word uh, as just going alongside Steve and being sharpened together uh, for the sake of ministry. And I've been asked uh, several times recently, what, what have you learned? Like, how would you summarize just your, your takeaways, what you learned in seminary? So I just had kind of two things I wanted to share, kind of two big picture. Uh, here's, here's my takeaways. Here's what I learned in seminary. Uh, first is, uh, is a greater confidence in the word of God. Uh, I mean, that, that is the, the expositor seminary. I mean, in the, in the title, expositor, one who would uh, exposit, preach, teach God's word uh, verse by verse to, to understand the scripture, to be able to declare what God says. Uh, I have uh, in my office at home different verses that I've written on the wall just to remind me. Uh, this, is why, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. At, you know, when you're studying uh, Greek flashcards at midnight. Okay, this is why it matters. And uh, Jeremiah 23, 29 uh, is one of those verses uh, God says, is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock to pieces. Uh, so as we've gone through seminary, just to see God's word at work, just to, to be able to, to again realize that God has given us his very word, uh, the power of God to salvation, the, the word of God that brought all of us, all of us that know Christ, were, were brought from death to life by the word of God. That is the means that he uses. So just to have a, a greater confidence, you think about uh, Greek and Hebrew, learning the original languages. A lot of times people ask like, well, you know, what, what's the difference as you read the Bible? You know, do, do, you, need, do you really need it? And, and I'd say the difference is that it gives you a clarity as you study it, a greater clarity to be able to stand in front of people and say, this is what God says. And I have clarity because I've studied it in the language it was written in. So that I can have confidence to say, yes, what you have on the pages of your Bible, your English, your English Bible, this is what God has said. This is what he has written for his people. And so being able to just have the tools to study scripture, uh, just to be able to have a, a greater confidence that, yes, this is God's word. It, it does have power. And as you study the details of a text, just being shaped by those things. Uh, part of what, what seminary is, is uh, a shaping, uh, shaping of convictions. We talk about uh, convictions, we mean is that certain truths would, uh, would grip you. Certain truths from the Bible would grip you in such a way that uh, your life would change. That th those truths would take hold of you and that they would shape how you parent and how you act in the world and how you talk to others in the trajectory of your life. So that's, uh, that is what, what seminary has done for me. It has built convictions around God's word. Uh, one of those, uh, just a, kind of a mantra here, is uh, right after the passage just met read in 2 Timothy 4 2, you know, after, after Paul is saying to Timothy to, to you know, the, the apostolic age, like he said, is coming off the scene. And then he says, what, what do you do now? Now that the apostles are gone, now that the miracles of the New Testament age are gone, well, 2 Timothy 4 2, Paul says to Timothy, preach the word. Uh, this is what Omri Miles has uh, inscribed on his pulpit in New Orleans uh, in the Greek, Keruxan Tan Lagan, preach the word to declare, this is what God has said. So seminary has just been a, a really, just a special time just to have more clarity of what God says, to be able to declare it, to say this, this is what the living God has spoken to his people for all time. And uh, in the, I think the first uh, week of seminary, the first class, a Greek class that we had, uh, Professor Matt Wehmeyer, he showed at the start of a uh, seminary, he showed a picture of a 90-year-old woman on the screen. And he said, uh, he just said this, I want you to think about this woman as you're, as you're thinking about uh, studying late nights, studying Greek vocab, and just to realize, he said, he told a story of this as a, a faithful lady in his church when he was pastoring a church in California. And he just talked about, this is a, a woman that she didn't want any frills. She didn't care about the programs of the church. She just came every Sunday because she wanted to hear God's word. And so he said, this is, this is why you do the, the hard things. Because there are God's people that want to be fed with God's truth, that need to hear God's truth. And, uh, and for me, that, that picture, as I've been here the last several years, uh, both uh, in seminary training, but the last three years, getting to, to serve full-time at the church and lead the, the student ministries, the picture for me isn't a 90-year-old lady. It is a, a room uh, across the hall full of, full of students, uh, middle and high schoolers, and just thinking about the, just the privilege to be able to teach God's word to the, the next generation, to know that this, the truth of the Bible is what's going to shape them, uh, change their, their trajectories, uh, change their marriages one day, change their families, uh, have an eternal impact on their souls for those that don't yet know Christ. 
so that's a, that is a, just a big picture takeaway from seminary, is uh, just a, a confidence in God's word. And the, the second thing, uh, just, just that I've walk away from, is, uh, from seminary, is just a, a greater love for the church. To think about just, just you all, Grace Bible Church. Um, you know, when I look back at six years, I don't, I don't think about as much of the, the late nights and the, the books and the papers and the flashcards I mean, all those things, yes. But I look back at the last six years and I just I think about you all. I just think about the, the saints in this room that have loved my family, uh, that have taken such good care of us, that have uh, just provided Christian love and affection and fellowship. Um, and that's what, that's what the seminary process is, as Smed said. It's, it's just being involved in the local church. It's not just about academics. Uh, it's about uh, body life. It's about fellowship. I mean, the, the church is what produces the next generation of pastors and missionaries. Uh, it produces the next generation of moms and dads and faithful proclaimers of Christ in the world. So uh, my seminary journey is, is just so tied to just this, this church. We just uh, are so thankful for uh, Grace Bible Church for just the, the love and care and affection that we've received uh, from, from all of you for uh, just enduring uh, me and different things. I think about the first time I taught in a small group was uh, in Josh Kelso's small group and uh, Jason and Lisa McInturf. They're at Gilbert Bible Church now, but I remember, I just remember them sitting there and kindly smiling as I just fumbled along and tried to figure out what I was going to say. And, uh, but just the, the encouragement. I've, I've only ever experienced encouragement uh, from the church in all those things. So I just wanted to just, just take an opportunity just to say thank you, Grace Bible Church. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for the support, for the fellowship, uh, just for the strengthening, uh, for your prayers. Uh, every, every semester, uh, I remember every single semester, kind of hit a point with about four or five weeks left where you, you kind of hit this wall and you're wondering, can I, can I actually get all this done? You, know, you start listing out, here's all the assignments, here's the days that I have left, here's all the responsibilities that I have left. And, uh, and just kind of pleading with the Lord, Lord, I don't, I don't think I can do it. And I remember one of those moments, uh, actually, I've seen Diane Allen in the back there, just came up to me on a Sunday, and I hit one of those walls, and she just said, hey, Kyle, I'm praying for you this semester. And, uh, and that was just so many of you that, that did that, that prayed, encouraged us, just in those, you know, and hit those walls and just, uh, just continue to press on because of the encouragement and prayers from, from so many of you. So I just wanted to just thank a couple people specifically, uh, just thank the elders uh, of this church uh, who, like Smed said, just a, a commitment to the expansion of the gospel. I mean, you, you all have, I mean, you've loved us, you've supported us, uh, you've employed me the last three years uh, as I've, I'm just a privilege to be able to, to go through seminary and to work full time at the church and get to put those things in, in practice. Uh, but your commitment to just gospel expansion, to, to drawing in, building up, sending out, is what it says on the, the front wall. And just to see you have a heart to see Christ's name proclaimed, you know, in this city, in New Orleans, uh, in Gilbert, in Papua New Guinea, and to have men like Josh Kelso and Omri Miles kind of go before me to watch them, to get to spend time with Josh. I mean, he really was uh, just a shaping influence for Ashley and I as we grew up in this church, as we first came to this church, and get to watch him uh, pastor here and be sent out from here to come alongside Omri and serve together. It was just a huge privilege, and to see him just walk faithfully and be sent out from here. So uh, just, just thank you. And, and Smed, uh, I don't know if you guys know how much time and energy and effort that Smed puts into the seminary, but, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's just a huge thing behind the scenes. That, that he does, I mean, week after week, I mean, chapels, and he's teaching Greek, and he's meeting with guys, and he's just laboring for the sake of, of training up, 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. Uh, me and Steve joke that that's going to be written on, on Smed's tombstone, 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, because he is just so committed to, to training up men. So Smed, thank you for the, just all of the, the labor, the hours, the dedication, uh, just so thankful for it. Uh, just a couple other people to thank. Uh, I got I to gotta give a shout out to Steve. Steve Kovac has been, uh, like Smed said, we started together six years ago. And the first, uh, I remember the first class that we had, we're sitting there and all of a sudden it's like, all right, we have to learn a new language. I haven't been in school for 10 or 15 years. Steve hadn't been in school for probably 20 years. And, uh, and we're sitting there, we, we get through the first class and Steve's just looking at me, kind of wide-eyed. And then he says, let's pray, Kyle. <laughs> 
<laughs> and uh, just Steve, your, your encouragement throughout to see him, he's just a diligent student. I mean, he pressed me to, to work harder uh, in my studies because I, just watching how hard he worked and how hard he labored just to be, to be faithful with God's word uh, was just, just a huge encouragement. I couldn't, couldn't have done it without him. Um, I have to thank, uh, my parents are here. Thank you guys for just support along the way, just encouragement. Um, also my, my father-in-law. So I, uh, first three years of seminary, I actually, uh, worked for my father-in-law. I worked for him for about eight years and, uh, and asked him if I could start doing one day a week out of the office and start doing seminary. And I think that initially was a little bit of a surprise and he, uh, and he let me do it. Didn't, didn't even cut my pay. And, uh. <laughs> And did that for three years. And then when I, when I came into his office and said, hey, I have an opportunity to, to work full time at the church, uh, he just, he said, hey, I'm, I'm proud of you. And that was his uh, response. So just, just thankful for all the, the ways the Lord has used uh, people in our lives just to, to strengthen us. And obviously I have to, to thank my wife uh, on Mother's Day. Uh, my kids, uh, just for their support, Ashley has been uh, only supportive. I think uh, we, we joke that there's people that she talks to that are, are, their husbands are doing seminary or pastors, and they kind of say, yeah, he told me when we got married, this is the, the path that we're going to be on. I'm going to be in pastoral ministry. And Ashley's like, well, you, you didn't tell me that when we got married. I didn't, I didn't sign up for this. So, uh, but, but she has only, only been supportive. I never, never heard a complaint from her about, about any of it. I mean, the only thing I ever heard from her was, hey, don't you need to be studying? Why, why aren't you hitting the books right now? But she has been just a, just a strengthener, a helper, just a, throughout the whole process. I, mean, I am just so thankful for her, her support, her love for this church. I think both of us would just say what we have grown is just our love for the church. I mean, and seeing her do summer camps and winter camps and late nights and just serving others has been just a, just a joy to, to watch her do that as we've gone through this path. So thank you, Ashley, for your love, support along the way. And uh, thank you, Grace Bible Church. Love you guys. Well, I'm not sure how I'm going to follow that amount of gratitude, but I will. Uh, church. I'm just, uh, I am full of gratitude. Uh, it's just been such a special season in these last few weeks to just look back on six years of study, six years of being immersed in the church, and just to appreciate how much the body is actually participating and contributing to the training of men. So um, as I've been thinking of you and praying for you, uh, a passage comes to mind from the book of Philippians. At the beginning of the book, it starts out like this. Paul says, I thank my God in all remembrance of you, always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer for you all in view of your participation in the gospel from the first day until now. And so when I hear those words, I think about the participation that this church has in the gospel, the body, in the by means of training men. And it's just been such a special thing. I just want to kind of shape up what the last six years have, have looked like, try to quantify some of the things that you just heard from Kyle and from Smed. This is what uh, training is like in the classroom anyway. So over the course of six years, the full expositor seminary curriculum requires 1,542 hours in the classroom, 3,000 hours or so on assignments outside the classroom, 42 written papers, position papers, papers to help clarify what you actually believe about what the Bible says, um, nearly 100 books, and that doesn't feel like very much over those last six years as I think about how many books I've had to read. 100 books doesn't seem like very many, but it does sort out to about uh, 20 or 22,000 pages of assigned reading. Endless nights working on sermon outlines, pondering theological concepts, annual conferences, annual fundraisers. And we couldn't do that. We couldn't, a student cannot go through those things without the support of the body. And so I'm just so grateful that we have a church that participates in that. 
the specific encouragements that come to mind are things that you may not even expect. Um, you know, little things in the hall, like, like uh, what Kyle was referring to. I can't tell you how many times Matt Kyle has asked me, hey, how are your studies going this week? Uh, they're really hard. <laughs> but that actually gave me the fuel to endure another long night of study. The, the girls in the office, the staff here at the church during the week on a Wednesday, as we come in and out of the office and into the classroom, and we have things on our mind about book work, just the simple encouragements to, with a smile to say, hey, how are you doing today? Anything we can help you with. And of course, behind the scenes, they're, they're helping in the classroom. They're helping facilitate the practical things that are required for study. So grateful for that. You know, uh, as part of the training goes, uh, being immersed in the residency that TES is, we get to participate in all sorts of ministry, leading small group and participating in student ministries. You know, the, the student ministries participation that we've had, we've been able to just contribute, my wife and I, to that ministry. And uh, it has been strengthening for us. It's reminded, of, uh, reminded us of why we need to study hard. Uh, I even got uh, uh, another question this morning from my high school chief question asker, <laughs> and those things are encouraging. Okay, we're going to get questions. We need to make sure we know what we're talking about. We should study hard. So thank you, high school students. Thank you, small group, for enduring my leadership and watching me grow and, and letting me help facilitate ministry in the home. It's just it's so sweet and so formative. Thank you uh, to families and, and, and to uh, marriages that stand out as an example of how to endure life for the long haul, like Tom and Suzanne Blevins. You know, these, these body encouragements throughout the week are the fuel that students need to endure hard academic study and even the, the shaping that takes place in all the classrooms that you heard some men mention. So thank you so much, body. Um, you know, I, I also I just I I also had written down. I I, I got to make sure to thank Kyle because because Kyle has been such an encouragement to me, and I don't I, I'm not sure I could have made it through without you. I mean, uh, I can remember Kyle and I sitting on the beach at the beginning of seminary. We were in I think Oceanside or somewhere like that, and just contemplating what will the Lord do with our lives if we give our lives to study in God's word. And, and it was a sweet encouragement that, that reminded me of how important that is through all of the study, through all of the ministry opportunities, through all the body life in those six years. I also need to thank, uh, just give a special thanks to my parents. Uh, you know, my uh, Elaine and Steve Kovac, my parents who are part of this body, um, have grown a business for 30, 40 years and watched their son come up into that business, eventually lead that business, and then leave that business to go to seminary. Something that most folks wouldn't understand, and yet uh, my dad has just only been encouraging, has only affirmed what God has do, done in my life, and so I uh, don't know if I could have done it without you, Dad. Thank you. Um, and last but of course not least, my wife, who has uh, not just endured all the study at home, but also gave me two children during the course of my study. <laughs> uh, we named our uh, fourth child, I had to think about that, our fourth child, Ezra Tyndale. Someone was in seminary at that time. <laughs> this morning, Ezra said to me, Dad, can, can you speak for one minute and then let me speak for five minutes? I'm like, okay, that's, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Elders of Grace Bible Church, thank you. Thank you for bringing TES to Tempe. Thank you for facilitating and prioritizing the training of men. This church is known to train men. In fact, we get other churches, and I'm not sure if you realize this, but we have other churches from around the country that come through town to just ask us, hey, how do you train men? And of course, with the reputation that you all support, that SMED leads in training of men, they're, they are equipped to, to, to learn and to be shaped on how they train their own men. So your influence and the influence of SMED goes beyond the walls of, of this building. And, it's, and it's, that's, that's just a sweet thing. Seminary is a training ground. It's a formative training ground. And, and the expositor of seminary is unique, as you know. 
Expositors brings in uh, about a dozen or so other like-minded pastors to help sharpen and shape the way that we think and the way that we see life, understand the Bible, the way that we think through the languages and theology and counseling and pastoral leadership, how to handle God's word. But, but that's not where training starts, right? That seminary is not where training begins. Tra uh, equipping begins from the pulpit on Sunday mornings, does it not? And, and it begins at Grace Bible Church. We, we have programs for, for all of us to benefit from. And it starts uh, with this church, a church that's known for equipping men and equipping the saints well. It starts with the programs that we have built in Wellspring. And uh, I was with uh, a pastor, Pastor uh, Philip Smith from Stewart, Florida, Community Baptist. Uh, and as I was talking to he and his wife, as I'm talking, uh, his wife, Tanya, says, I can tell that you're from GBC. I said, really? Why is that? She said, because I, I kind of hear Scott Maxwell and Smedley Yates. <laughs> But, but it's true that the, 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 the equipping that these men have, have pressed in to this body with is formative. Uh, and so I do, I have a question for you all, and, and I, because it, it does speak back to when I first was intrigued about being equipped here at this church. And as I was thinking about these uh, comments this morning, it occurred to me it was 12 years ago to the week. 12 years ago to the week, and, and Scott Maxwell, who was preaching on that day, uh, talking about the fall semester, um, said, hey, who in this church has taken build? And he asked for a show of hands. So I'd like just to ask the same question. By a show of hands, how many men in this church have gone through build? Now look around. This is what I did 12 years ago. I looked around and I said, wow, th this, tr this church equips its people. And it must be good equipping because I think the next question he asked was, who's been through it twice? And everybody just kept their hands up. <laughs> it was good. I needed to hear that because I needed to take it like three times. So I, I want to encourage you to be equipped. Be equipped on the front end. Be equipped with the resources that God has given to this body. No one's excluded from that. This is a priority for your elders. It's a priority for your leaders. After build... Going through the trust, learning systematic theology uh, is, is even, uh, I, I'd say, more rigorous, but, but formative. And so the, the process from starting our equipping with build, then the trust, and then into seminary has just been a, a wonderful journey. Um, and the other night, uh, Kyle and I were out to dinner with some friends, our wives and their friends, and, and there was some questions being asked, and, and we were talking about our seminary experience. One of the questions was, what, what was the hardest part of seminary? Very hardest part of seminary. Uh, what was the thing that most surprised you about seminary? And uh, what might surprise you is it's not necessarily the academics, although those are hard. Kyle had it right. I hadn't been to school in 20 years. I had to figure out how to study. So not only did I have to learn the material, but I had to learn how to learn the material. And, and so, yes, those things were hard. They're challenging. But I think one of the hardest parts of seminary is, is finding out that when God does take you from one environment, like a business, puts you into seminary by his providence, that he's not just giving you a place to be entertained or to muse on theological things, but he's actually shaping the trajectory of your life. And, and so it wasn't until about two or three years in, I'm really thinking about that and saying, well, God's really doing something here. And at the end of seminary, it has become more clear to me this summer, my family and I will be moving from this church to uh, Katy, Texas and joining Cornerstone Bible Church. And we will be going with all the equipping that you have afforded us. Yes, that's the same church that the Maxwells will wind up at. So that is a sweet providence from the Lord. And so, church, we love you. Uh, my wife, my children, uh, all the relationships that we have have just been so, so special. And we're not going far. Keep an eye on these parents of mine over here, will you? We love you. Uh, and, and then, of course, I just need to finish by saying thank you, Smed. Smed's fingerprints will be on my life forever. And I'm forever grateful for that. Let his fingerprints be on your life. Listen to his words. Obey your leaders. Think about the truth that they're dispensing for your benefit. They care. One of the things you learn in the trust 
is, is the amount of work that goes into the preparation of the gospel on Sunday morning, every Sunday morning. You get the opportunity, if you've been through the trust, to prepare a sermon over the course of about nine months. These men do this every week. And they do it with the love and care in mind they have for the body. And so, um, don't let those resources pass you by. Immerse yourself in those things. Be shaped, be shaped by the gospel truth that is available to you through all of the shaping tools, mechanisms, leaders, mentorships, small groups, venues that are offered here at Grace Bible Church. Thank you, Smed. We love you. Thank you, church. All right, we have some gifts for Kyle and for Steve and for their families. So I'm going to ask you guys to come down, bring your wives, bring your quivers full. And uh, right down here is great. And, uh, and, and these are gifts for Kyle and Ashley. And for Steve and Drew. But in another sense, these are gifts to Grace Bible Church. Um, as a thank you from the elders, as a thank you from Steve and Kyle to all of you. Um, yeah, we are, we are taking photos, so we're, thank you, Matt. Arrange us as you see fit. You can give us signals. It's great. So squish in, guys. Yes, we want you to open them. Why don't you do it one at a time? Some family Christmases are all at the same time. You don't see what's going on. Others are... So, okay, yep, there we go. So I'll explain these so you can see them. There's a, there's a bottle of, of ink in Grace Bible Church blue. And Jeff Kershaw will be happy about that. Uh, that ink goes in a pen, so it's in that long box. You can open that up, which is also in GBC blue. And, uh, and then there, for you, Ashley, there's some... Um, some jewelry in GBC blue. Those are not for you, Kyle. There's a tie in GBC blue. And then there are cufflinks. So every time you button the sleeves of your shirt, if you happen to have French cuffs, you are to remember Grace Bible Church and, and the love here. But I say these are gifts to Grace Bible Church. Um, you just have to go to Kyle's house to see them. <laughs> and Steve, open yours. And so these, this is um, University of Texas Orange. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Texas A&M Maroon. No, no, heavens. Uh, no, this is GBC Blue, all the same items. And, and Drew, for you, the same. And this is just a, a token of love from this church and from the elders of this church. Um, we are so thankful for your fingerprints on our lives. And we will never forget. So thank you for the hard work. I'm going to ask the elders to come up. We're going to pray for you guys. Um, it's sort of natural when we pray to lay hands on. This is different than the laying hands of ordination of eldering. Uh, seminary graduation does not make a pastor. Uh, just to be clear, it's not like you walk across a stage and boom, you're a pastor. Uh, other things involving the local church are required for that. Um, but these hands are hands of love. And uh, we're going to pray for you for all that God does in the coming days. Let's pray together as a church, shall we? Heavenly Father, thank you for this threshold. Thank you for the opportunity to recognize your grace and all the hard work and all the sleepless nights and all the labor. We thank you for Ashley. We thank you for Drew. Their support, their love, their care for their husbands. We thank you for these kids uh, who have grown up in a household full of books and they have had time and love from their dads. We're so thankful for your grace in that. We thank you for the accomplishment of finishing up the academics. And we know that you've been shaping character. We know that you've been paving a path for them to serve you faithfully for a lifetime. God, hold them close. Keep them tethered to your word. Let them not falter or fail. Let them not drift. Give them decades of faithful ministry 
for the sake of the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen.